we have to talk boosters because we are getting, as with everything to do with COVID, the one positive is the data is rich and we're getting a lot of data on the boosters. Yeah, big publication uh, about four days ago. New England Journal, a very eminent journal, has revealed uh, what the booster is doing in Israel. Now, as you may know, the Israelis began to give boosters first. In fact, they began giving them in the summer. Uh, There was a study in Israel that said if you were over 60, you were three times more likely to be infected post-vaccination than someone who had been recently vaccinated. That was the evidence the vaccine's waning. On the back of that, they start the campaign, you know, and that was a bit controversial, like, is, is it really needed and so on. But now 1.1 million people over 60 have been given boosters, and it's a remarkable set of data. I mean, they're 11-fold less likely to be infected now, you know, post-boosting, which is tremendous. And then secondly, their immune response. They've measured all their antibodies and various things. Huge increase in immunity after the third shot. So now the Israelis basically have told us that boost, boosting is really working. Now, is that a huge increase in immunity at the third shot from the day before you got the shot or is it a complete increase from at any point at which you had at vaccines any point. before? Yeah, yeah. It's been renamed. We, we, thought, we thought that the boost would be like a, re, like a refresher course, really, for the immune system. In other words, it's getting a bit sleepy. It's not an upgrade. These people's immune have been upgraded, right? And the antibodies they're getting, really interesting, will fight any variant, they think. There's a massive range of antibodies now in their bodies because the boost is so powerful, you know. And that's a great result, isn't it? Because that means that you won't need to get boosters in the future, is one prediction, by the way. It's so strong, this response. That they're predicting now, you'll be all right, maybe for two the three years you see so which kind of changes the understanding of it because uh, I had assumed that the booster was almost a patch job that the first two didn't quite work the way we'd hoped and the third put you back to where we thought you would be but boost is literally the right term yeah, this is a yeah. significant leap forward it is absolutely yeah. and what's happening is the antibody repertoire we call this by the way in my business has expanded massively it's almost as if the third shot is absolutely galvanising the immune system into a great state now what this means as well by the way they're talking about now this should be a three shot vaccine anyway because if the third shot works so well well, change the protocol, start with two and give a third later, and now you'll have persistent long-term protection is the idea. But it's so important, Anton, for the over 60s, because they were the ones where there was waning happening. There was evidence from the UK and Israel, maybe a 20% decrease, you know, this kind of thing. So so now we know that's the age group to think about. And we've been saying this the last few weeks, but but the Israeli data, there it is in front of us. But a lot of, Anton, we can see the data. The data screams, this is a very effective thing to do to people to give them a third shot. What about them acting as hosts, even if they are asymptomatic? That's the other good part of this. So so obviously, if you're decreasing your risk of infection 11-fold, right, that means you're less likely to see people getting infected. Spread goes down. And guess what? Cases are plummeting in Israel again because of this. Now, they're boosting everybody over 12, by the way. It's amazing. They're going to boost the whole country, it looks like, you see. So, so what they're seeing now is a decrease in spread, which is what we want, remember. And vaccines are actually all about that as well as protecting you from getting sick, of course. They also should be decreasing. So less hosts, if you like, for the virus to live in. And that's what this booster shot does. It's almost as if you're getting a two coats of armour on in a sense you won't get infected and then you won't be a source of infection and so we're seeing a drop in cases in Israel as well And without having been subjected to them how can they have confidence in the assumption that the booster will increase resistance to variants which have yet to be seen? Yeah, because they look at the antibodies. So you can take someone's blood, say post-boosting, measure the antibodies in that person's blood, and these are very powerful antibodies. They're the most powerful antibodies they've seen so far, if you like. Like two shots is good, by the way, remember. Let's not downplay the importance of two shots, and many under 60 are, are still fine, you know. But then with the third shot, take the antibodies, and they're all different types now. It's incredible. You get to think called affinity maturation, not to be too technical, but these antibodies are very mature. They can bind loads of spike. Now remember, that the vaccines are bringing out antibodies for the spike protein, and now the, the range of antibodies. It's called breath is the word. There's a broad range of antibodies. And now they're saying, look, let's not be as fearful of, of future variants, because if you take a booster, that should protect against beyond Delta is the idea. And again, that's a bit theoretical, but still, that, that's what this paper is concluding. And not only a greater breath, but a greater longevity within the antibodies that are created. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and what they measure there is called memory B cells. And these cells, these cells that make the antibody, they go into your bone marrow and they wait until you're infected. Now, the big question is, how long will they be there for? And again, the booster is suggesting you get lots of memory B cells into your bone marrow. Maybe two years from now, if you're unlucky, you get infected. They're there to protect you, you see. So this, this, this long-term effect is what this is about, in a sense. And again, this paper is, is supporting that notion that you will see durable, long-term protection if you give a booster. Which, to some extent, makes it all the more frustrating when you look across the Atlantic. When you when you have numbers like the Danish and us at 90-plus percent vaccination, when you have Israel running out a, a, a third shot a booster programme, and you have the states still struggling to get people to 
uptake vaccines at all. Un- unrelenting mystery, isn't it? Still, Anthony, in many ways. I mean, the information. I, was, I told you, I was at a conference in Munich last week. I met two Americans at the conference from New York. They were like unicorns. Hadn't seen Americans in a long time. They said the information campaign is ramping up there now. Now, remember, a big reason for vaccine uh, reluctance and refusal was social media. YouTube this morning are banning all anti-vaxxer videos. Did you see that? So, so we're seeing a move towards getting the information out more effectively in the US. And the hope is that they'll increase their vaccination rate. Yeah, and they're getting very strident about how they handle it. I was, I was interested to read about the, the uh, New York State firing healthcare workers yeah. who are unvaccinated and refusing them social welfare supports once they were fired. Yeah. It's fairly and, and remember, New York was badly hit by this virus. And the American I met was from New York. He said they were terrified when, when that hospital ship pulled into the harbour that day, do you remember? And they built a massive field hospital in Central Park. So New Yorkers want to get rid of this virus. you know. And talk about going in hard, firing people. I mean, it's amazing isn't it, in that sense. Extraordinary. <laughs> Extraordinary.